morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Saturday the 27th of September 2025. Back with the regular forecast updates now and they're not stopping throughout the duration of the wet season. No more holidays booked, I can assure you that. But let's get stuck straight into things this morning. We do have that thunderstorm chance now later on next week uh, through parts of southeastern Queensland and into the northeast of New South Wales, as well as a low pressure system that's expected to bring rainfall deep into the Coral Sea and potentially close to the Queensland coastline through the middle parts of next week as well. There are top stories for today. Moving things over towards southeast Queensland, you can see it's a relatively fine picture that jet stream bringing lots of high cloud through parts of New South Wales uh, and that's extending in towards parts of southeast Queensland. So look up this morning, it could be some interesting cloud formations here and there, but nothing too crazy and nothing in the way of rainfall is ongoing through parts of southeast Queensland. We're not going to be talking about rainfall for the foreseeable future. Now that high pressure system that's situated over Queensland right now is going to be suppressing all rainfall and low pressure system activity around Queensland. So rainfall is not anticipated around Queensland or New South Wales until at least early October. A few thunderstorms here and there through parts of New South Wales in the uh, tomorrow and through Monday afternoon, but you can see rainfall does not pop up in towards Queensland right out towards Wednesday, and that, that's where we're going to start to see the thunderstorm potential begin to build across parts of southeastern Queensland and into the northeast of New South Wales. Now, I've highlighted Wednesday and Thursday this week as a very good day for thunderstorms. There's some good potential for severe thunderstorms through parts of the Granite Belt, southeast Queensland, the Sunshine Coast, and then into the northeast of New South Wales and locations such as Brisbane, the Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, Lismore, uh, Grafton, Coffs Harbour, and then further inland out towards Toowoomba in Queensland and Tamworth in New South Wales could be impacted by some pretty gnarly thunderstorms. At this time of the year, we do expect the northeasterly winds to really be blowing quite hard, bringing in that moisture from the Coral Sea and delivering that straight in towards southeast Queensland. And that's exactly what's going to happen through Wednesday. A big build up of that moisture coming through from the coastal regions of the Coral Sea. And that's going to bring ex extensive moisture and extensive humidity values to what is going to be a very warm day through Wednesday into southeast Queensland. Thunderstorms developing from about midday onwards would say will be at their strongest between four and seven o'clock in the afternoon. We'll likely see good thunderstorms then moving into the Brisbane metro area, the Gold Coast, and even parts of the Sunshine Coast after about seven or eight o'clock at night. And then these thunderstorms do die off a little bit later on at night after about eight or nine o'clock, as you would normally expect around this time of the year. A very stock standard thunderstorm outbreak by the looks of things. The Eastern Blue is actually calling for some pretty meaty numbers here, especially in terms of the convective available potential energy values for these thunderstorms. There is plenty of instability and plenty of energy for these storms to make the most of energy values here getting close to 1800, 1900. They're good values by any stretch of the imagination and for this time of the year they are some great numbers. It is going to be a good start to storm season if we see stuff like this continue and again with that warm weather there's plenty of good uh, it, there's plenty of good indicators that we are going to see some pretty decent thunderstorms on Wednesday and then pushing this forecast out to Thursday you can see those energy and instability values continue to rise up to about 4000 here offshore from New South Wales. That's heaps of energy available for these thunderstorms to make the most off and we're going to see some gnarly thunderstorms developing on Thursday that's for sure. Now the thing with Thursday is they're expected to be a little bit more concentrated. We're going to be seeing, be seeing these thunderstorms a lot closer to the coastline which means the forecast models are not grasping this situation as well as they probably should. We're going to have to wait till about Wednesday to really see how strong these thunderstorms are going to get on the forecast because this is something that the convective forecast models are going to have to take a much closer look at but we're going to see thunderstorms here concentrated to the Sunshine Coastline and some good thunderstorms extending up into the Capricorn forecast district as well along the central Queensland coastline north of Harvey Bay through Bundaberg, Gladstone, Agnes Water right up towards Rockhampton and Ogmore. So these thunderstorms here are a lot more coastal based. Again, we're going to have to wait to see what the convective forecast modelling has to say, but I definitely reckon some good thunderstorms are expected around the Sunshine Coast on Thursday. And in fact, some of the most potent thunderstorms so far this year are possible throughout the Sunshine Coast on Thursday. Definitely will be a day to watch, that's for sure. And then you can see forecast modeling pushing this forward through Friday. Conditions do begin to ease off and clear. And we're not kind of at that time of the year. We're not in November yet where we're talking about thunderstorms occurring nearly every other day for Queensland. And we do kind of have to wait till about the 9th or the 10th of October for the next thunderstorm outbreak to begin to show signs of developing. And then it looks like we get a bit of a rain band towards the middle parts of October. And I've highlighted the middle parts of October as being a bumper period for rainfall and storms through parts of Queensland and New South Wales. And that's probably going to be our next major cycle type weather event, sort of around 
mid-October. Uh, this week, or later part, uh, parts of this coming week, Wednesday and Thursday, kind of, kind of be a bit of a taste. We're dipping our toes in the water for what we're expecting towards the middle parts of October. Now, the main hazards with these thunderstorms, typical for this time of the year, heavy rainfall, damaging winds, and large hailstones. In terms of tornadoes or tornado-type uh, rotations through these thunderstorms, we're not expecting anything too crazy. These are some strong thunderstorms, but they are pretty stock standard around this time of the year, so we're not expecting anything too crazy. Just the usual large hailstones between that three to five centimeter caliber, uh, some damaging wind gusts up to around 100 to 110 kilometers an hour, and some heavy pockets of rainfall as well under the right thunderstorms. In terms of preparations, this is not a, a thunderstorm outbreak that I'd be overly concerned about at this point in time. On the day of these thunderstorms, you may want to be moving loose outdoor items in uh, inside or undercover in places where they're not going to blow around in case you do get a strong thunderstorm coming through that will cause strong wind gusts in uh, your neck of the woods. Uh, but at this point in time, this is not a thunderstorm outbreak to be concerned about or to be preparing for. This is very, very stock standard stuff for this time of the year. And I'd treat this forecast more as a heads up as opposed to a prepare now type weather event. But yeah, definitely prepare now for some warm temperatures. That's for sure. Temperatures expected to be into the early 30s across southeast Queensland and into the mid 30s through parts of central Queensland and even into the high 30s the further north that you get. In fact, we could be talking about temperatures approaching 36, if not 37, on both Wednesday and Thursday around Claremont, Emerald and Rolleston. Uh, and I'm surprised we're not seeing thunderstorms firing up on the forecast on either Wednesday or Thursday out there. There could be some very good ones indeed. But yeah, any questions or comments on this thunderstorm outbreak, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to help you out there with some advice. Uh, but it isn't an event to be getting overly concerned about at this point in time. It's just something we usually see around this time of the year. Stock standard stuff, but definitely the first really meaty outbreak that I'm seeing on the forecast for season 2025-26. Now, a little bit earlier than that, we do have some coral sea moisture that is expected to develop mainly through today. In fact, we've got uh, some strong um, easterly winds moving through parts of the coral sea, and you can see convective uh, cloud cover is now beginning to increase through parts of the coral sea, and you can see those wind gusts as well beginning to pick up as, uh, through some of the coral sea islands as well. Now, normally when we talk about wind gusts increasing through parts of the coral sea islands, including for Willis Island and adjacent reefs, we're talking about rainfall through parts of North Queensland. I can comfortably say right now we're not expecting heavy rainfall in the next couple of days through northern Queensland or throughout the Queensland coastline in general, but we will be talking about some very heavy rainfall developing offshore in the first low pressure system of this season for the Coral Sea, and it is all happening around Queensland, of course, around this time of the year. So later on tonight into early tomorrow morning, these easterly winds are going to be picking up a lot more moisture, and that's going to increase a surge of cloud cover through parts of the Coral Sea, and we're expecting heaps of cloud cover to develop heavy rainfall, in fact, torrential rainfall at times well offshore from the Queensland coastline through Sunday, and then this rainfall slowly does head south as this low pressure system continues to develop a little bit more adjacent to the Queensland coastline once again but this low pressure system through Sunday and Monday then moving further out to sea and really falling apart by the looks of things through Monday and Tuesday. The remnants of this low pressure system though or kind of the remnant energy of this low pressure system may make it into the central Queensland coastline around Tuesday or Wednesday and could deliver a day or so worth of rainfall where we could be seeing totals between 25 to 50 millimetres around Rockhampton. Uh, that's at least from this forecast modelling here. The GFS is a little bit more conservative in terms of what rainfall is expected but but I do reckon we will see some showers around the Rockhampton area through Tuesday and Wednesday, the 30th of September and the 1st of October, respectively. And like I said, falls between 25 to 50 millimetres are a possibility or a potential on the forecast around that time period for a few concentrated locations. But yeah, just replaying this forecast back to tomorrow, you can see this rainfall very heavy at times around the Queensland coastline. If this low pressure system does actually slide 100 kilometres further towards the west, this would be a bit of a concern for Queensland. And it could catch a few people off guard in terms of what rainfall is expected. But the chances of that happening at this point in time are very, very remote indeed. And I can safely say with a very high degree of certainty through central, northern and far northern Queensland, heavy rainfall is not expected and is an incredibly remote chance at this point in time. So this is not a system to be worrying about at all. But some pretty gnarly rainfall accumulation numbers are expected over the next five days. Just have a look at this. This is out to the 1st of October inclusive. Some pretty decent numbers are expected. In fact, bordering on 350 millimetres through a few pockets here. In fact, approaching 400 millimetres in a few pockets which shows you how much energy is available right now in the coral sea for these low pressure systems once they do develop to really make the most of. This is not tropical cyclone in nature either. We're not talking about a low pressure system developing into a potential cyclone. And I'm only talking about this because it does highlight the amount of energy that is available in the coral sea for these low pressure systems once they do begin to ramp up as we get later on into the year to really make the most of. So this is certainly a place to be watching, that's for sure. Sea temperatures in the coral sea are still quite cool at this point in time. We're looking at temperatures around that 26 
26 or 25 to 27 degree mark through much of the Coral Sea, but they are beginning to warm up. And as we enter into this cool neutral phase, which is teetering on the edge of a La Nina in the Pacific Ocean, you can see those sea temperatures now beginning to boil around the Solomon Islands here, 29 degrees in the Solomon Sea. And those sea temperatures over the next month or so will push deeper into the Coral Sea and really warm that East Australian current up as if it couldn't get any warmer that it is right now flowing a lot warmer than average and that is a concerning aspect for Queensland on the forecast and it's why we're expecting such extreme rainfall through northern and far northern Queensland uh, out to about February or March of next year it really is quite a concerning factor indeed and to be seeing rainfall of this caliber already developing into the Coral Sea it does kind of uh, teeter on the edge of what I would consider concerning on the forecast at least for the 2025-26 wet season it definitely looks like it is going to be quite a spicy one that's for sure uh, in terms of other weather happening around Australia with that southern stratospheric warming event that we've been talking about over on Facebook for the last couple of days, we are seeing a pretty significant shift across southeastern Australia. Warm and dry through New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia. That rainfall that we were promising through September and early October is showing no signs of showing up, that's for sure. That should begin to kind of teeter off around mid-October or so and conditions will return towards that wetter than average trend that we're seeing through November. But for Tasmania, it's a completely different story with those roaring 40 trade winds still expected to blow hard and fast through October. We're expecting a pretty stormy month for Tassie and you can see yet another cold front going through them this morning. Uh, this one a little bit more well, weaker in nature compared to the ones we have had recently but still winds 80 kilometres an hour sustained out of the north of Matsyker Island and strong winds throughout the west coast of Tasmania and through the Bass Strait as well and these stormy conditions expected to continue uh, being an ongoing problem for Tasmania right through October and potentially right out towards late October and into early November. Victoria and South Australia though parched locations through there you can see whilst the west coast of Tasmania runs away with all of the rainfall there's not an awful lot on the forecast through parts of victoria and south australia and even less on the short range forecast for these strand impacted communities through south australia and victoria a little bit of concern on the forecast that's for sure in terms of other weather happening around Australia, it's just stock standard business as usual stuff for the remainder of the NT, South Australia and Western Australia, warming up as you would expect for this time of the year, drying out down in the south and increasing in moisture up in the north. Very typical for this time of the year. It's grand final day, so the weather uh, down in uh, Melbourne as well uh, through Victoria is looking pretty healthy for grand final day. I completely forgot to mention this at the start of the forecast update, but it's looking like a nice top of about 22 degrees through Melbourne today. Winds will be around that fresh uh, kind of threshold out of the uh, west, we'll be talking about winds between that 30 to 40 kilometre an hour mark or gusts up to around that 30 to 40 kilometre an hour mark and temperatures feeling like around 20 to 22 degrees through Melbourne, the real temperature being around that 17 to 19 degree mark around Melbourne as the big game is played. I'm going for the Ford Cats, please don't want, don't unsubscribe if you're going for Brisbane. I know the majority of my audience is from Queensland, but I'm going for the Ford Cats. I don't think they're going to get up though. I do think it's going to be the Brisbane Lions this year. So in terms of my prediction for the grand final, my forecast, I think it will be the Brisbane Lions by about 15 points, but I am really hoping that the Ford Cats do get up above the Brisbane Lions. That's going to be it for me today, though. I do hope you enjoyed this forecast update returning every day now and sometimes twice a day when we've got big weather to be talking about through parts of Queensland, especially uh, for the foreseeable future. Check me out over on Facebook as well if you haven't uh, already. Uh, and thank you for watching the video. Special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. Could not run the show without them. And of course, their support is, as always, massively appreciated. But that's all for me. Catch you on the next storm. Go the Ford Cats.